So, so I just have one of the first questions here. And before we officially start, I think we can answer that one. I'm a former 4-H member. I was told by a former leader that I was still eligible for scholarship. I was wondering if, that, if that's true. Yes, it's true. There are a few um, restrictions around it. So depending on the scholarship, you know, if you've been already in post-secondary at this point, you may be only eligible for so and so many scholarships that say, okay, second year onward, you, you have completed your first year or your second year or so on and so forth. But as long as you are a current or previous 4-H member and you've been in 4-H for a minimum of three years and you have all mm. your diaries and diary points and all the background information available to you, yes, you can still go in, register and apply. But it's scholarship dependent, so it's not for every scholarship the same. It really depends on the scholarship. And um, when we go through, I can show you where to find all the criteria. Pleasure. Okay, Jenny, what are we thinking? 604? Yes, yeah, 604. Let me take it real quick. Okay. So officially, thank you so much who is on this webinar call today, on this webinar um, screening today. My name is Bianca. I'm the Director of Development for the 4-H Foundation. I also have Ginny Smith and Karina. Ginny, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm Ginny Smith. I am the Forage specialist in the South region, but I have worked with Bianca and the Forage Foundation for several years on the entire scholarship, Forage scholarship program. So I'm very happy to be here and hopefully we can help you guys out tonight with some helpful hints and direction. Awesome. And then we also have Karina, who is our fund development coordinator. Hello. <laughs> okay, so first things first, when we look at the menu, so you go onto the scholarship application website, it goes in through registration.4hab.com. You can find that link on our 4-H Alberta um, scholarship, uh, on our 4-H Alberta website. It will bring you to our landing page. That's before you even log in. So the landing page has the FAQ, login and welcome, contact for H, register and password reminder on the top. Then we have a big red box um, on, uh, on here that uh, gives you pretty much de details around application deadline, who to contact, uh, what is needed, the, di the timelines, plus our new hopefully uploaded webinar. And then as you go further down, you have your login and um, additional information around written requirements, also called essays and references. So when you go through it, and those will be peppered throughout the rest of the application, when you go through it, you will notice that different regions have different requirements around references and written requirements. So in the Calgary region, for example, you have the Rain Tree, Rain, Rain Tree Financial Scholarship, and it's a 300 bird scholarship that outlines how 4-H has led you to where you are today. That will vary depending on the region you are in, just like the Calgary region has different reference requirements than East Central. So just make sure that when you go through, you kind of fully review it first before you start and know what um, is required from you. The login information, if you are a previously registered applicant, you can go in and just re-sign in. So you go in, email, password. If you forget it, click here to for a password reminder. If you don't have an account yet, you can click here to register. And then there are some others, how to use the site, which brings you to the bottom of the page with additional feedback and, and tips and tricks. 
However, again, if you do have questions and you, um, you know, need assistance or you need someone to help you through it, sometimes we will experience glitches and uh, it will not work or you can't get to your email or your password, contact us at scholarship at 4HAB.com and we'll make sure we help you. So I'm going to sign in with one of our test accounts. And because I've already done it before, I'm still remembered. Apparently I'm not. There we go. So the first page you get is our introduction page. It brings you back to the quick, fact, quick facts like on the main page that says, okay, what's the deadline? What do you need to know? It refers again to written requirements as well as um, details around the scholarship criteria, how to contact us and what you need. Scholarship criteria, that's the uh, document I was referring to earlier. And I think I was, um, was uh, Samantha who was asking about if she was eligible. When we click on it, it actually pulls up an entire list for our Forage Alberta scholarships. And um, we have a second link for the additional scholarships, which are regional or district scholarships. Both documents will outline what the requirements are to actually be eligible to participate. So for example, Peace Region, a Peace Regional Forage Council scholarship can be used at any university in post-secondary, um, any year of study, any program, and then in the criteria, you'll find the details. Bianca? Yes? I am just going to interrupt you there and mm -hmm. jump back to one question that was specific to the login. And just as a quick FYI to everybody, the username and password is specific to this scholarship application. It is not the same as the username and password assigned to each member for the 4-H registration system. Okay, thank you so much, Jenny, because yes, I guess I never thought about that, that there would probably be several different login informations that people have available, but yes, this one is specific to only your scholarship and your scholarship account. So once you go through here on the main page, which there is no action required, you just go through, you read whatever is um, you know, interesting to you and what you, know, you would actually have to look out for in terms of references or written requirements. And you go and start with your personal information. So it's, if you have done it before, that's also something we should keep in mind. If you are a returning applicant, you will actually have this already pre-populated. It's just for the ones who are completely new, you have to enter in your first name, your last name, your email address, birth date, your mailing address, current mailing address, which in the past we've noticed is a little bit different when people say, okay, this is my residential address because people will move, they will be on site on campus, will have gone to another city. So, please give us your current mailing address because we will have to send information to you or payment or your T4A. When we go down here, again, this refers to your eligibility. How many years have you completed uh, a membership in a club in 4-H Alberta? The minimum is three, but it could be that you've been in 4-H now for 10 years, nine years, eight years. So you just have to complete it. Um, you also have to pick your region because based on the region you'll select, you'll also be um, assigned your written requirements. It's also important for us to know because when uh, we start selecting, it will sort on the other end once the data is processed based on the, um, it will sort on the data that's based on your data entry and where you are currently participating with info age. And you just have to go through the page and just continue. Save, that's one thing I wanted to stress is save in between. So if you know you're not going to complete the entire um, uh, application in one go, because it ten, can take several hours, just make sure you save in between, you log out, you come back, 
whatever you had entered will still be there and you'll be able to just pick up where you left off but you have to save and it will turn out so when you go back and i'm going slowly when you go back to the top you see i have 38 minutes left in the session before i have to save again otherwise it will just kick you out and you have to start over again so one of the questions is, is the system open to all from H members or only seniors in high school? So one of the requirements is that we or the applicant is actually going to a post-secondary once they receive the scholarship. So you can't be in grade 11, you know, you have to still complete grade 12 and try to um, apply for the scholarship because we need to see a proof of enrollment that you are actually physically going into post-secondary. Just um, because it's a scholarship, we cannot hold it and it cannot be paid out into an RESP. So it, it will be paid out in, we, we selected in September. It will be paid out at the end of November, beginning of December. And, uh, and then you should be able to use it for your most current um, post-secondary university year. So once you save and you go to the next page, oh, value saved successfully. It will bring you to the next one and it's just your study information. What we had implemented um, in years, in two years ago, because we had um, universities in, um, uh, we had the youth that were continuing the post-secondary in a different school or, or institution. So they would have started in Lakeland and may have moved into U of A. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, fill out your high school information. Um, as of June of this year, how many years of post-secondary will you have completed? What's your GPA? Important on a GPA, if you're going to um, high school right now, um, if you're going to uh, high school right now, that you collect all your courses and your grades from this year. You take the average, you calculate the average, and then you take it by points. So whatever it is, you go into click here for GPA chart. And you can here see the conversion from percentage or from letter grade into the GPA and that's what you'll enter into the box. And then have you previously attended post-secondary? And if you say yes, then you have to mention it, what it was, and, uh, and just provide us the information. I also see um, Tracy saying, if there are any kids from Flagstaff. So Flagstaff is one of those um, exceptions. So for the most part, gener generally speaking, uh, scholarships are for kids in post-secondary. The Flagstaff uh, scholarship makes an exception if they are uh, younger than grade 12, but that's uh, selected by its separate committee. So thank you, Tracy. So I'm gonna jump in here too, mm -hmm. Bianca. And, <clears throat> sorry, and just add that we all know that this year is a little different in post-secondary and in high school um, and basically the the GPA will still go into effect because you will have achieved marks from September up until March we'll use as an example March 1st and everybody has that same deadline and basically it's Alberta education that is providing you the transcript and your transcript will be indicating your marks and you figure it out from that based on that chart that Bianca showed you. So I think this is Josh and asking, I'm currently in grade 12, would I use my current marks from this semester? So grade 12, you use whatever you had starting from grade 12. We'll just take it all and then we calculate the average. So if you're not in post-secondary yet, please um, 
include what you're planning to attend. So you just include the name, the location, when your semester starts and what you're doing and what the program name is. This one is important simply because um, this one is important simply because some scholarships will ask for specific um, programs. So a lot of them are ag related, but some of them are communication or marketing or uh, what have we seen? I think uh, nutrition. So just make sure you enter the information as you see it on your registration for your program. And then just briefly, because our donors and sponsors always like to know what the recipients are doing. Um, just let us know real quick, what do you plan once you're done? What are your plans once you've completed post-secondary? Are you going to, I don't know, be a veterinarian or are you going to be a teacher? And, and what are your plans? It's just always nice to see because when at the end of the year we have selected the scholarship recipients, we will also send posters to our um, donors and sponsors. And we'll include that snippet of information because it just um, is, is a nice, is, it's nice for, for them to see who, who their funds are going to. So we'll save it again. Oh, yeah. And because I actually did say, yes, I've attended a post-secondary, but I did not complete my field here. It's actually not letting me pro, um, proceed. So I'm just going to click no. And I move on to the next page. Before you go there, I'm going to jump mm -hmm. in again. Because mm -hmm. there's a couple little questions that we can answer as we go. Um, someone has asked, if you're in grade 10, can you start to apply for scholarships? Yes. There may be other scholarships out there that you can apply for, but this 4-H scholarship is for those that are graduating from grade 12, or as indicated by Tracy, mm -hmm. uh, the, the one in Flagstaff is an exception. So if you're in that Flagstaff area, you can apply before that. But for the most part, this application form would not be completed by anyone who is not planning on going into post-secondary this upcoming fall. Mm -hmm. So that is one. Um, the other one that is kind of related, uh, all scholarships will, uh, before you end up getting any of the money presented to you, you would need to show or provide proof of enrollment. So it could be uh, from the facility that you are attending, say it was the University of Lethbridge, they would show uh, that you have enrolled there and you've been accepted. That would be provided by you to the 4-H Foundation prior to you being uh, in receipt of the funds for any particular scholarship. Uh, one other question just to cover it. Yes, we're gonna cover about diary points later on in this application. All right, thank you, Jenny. Okay, moving on. So additional scholarships, I had mentioned earlier that there are some scholarships that will require, you will qualify for it based or depending on the region or district you, you currently reside or work in on your 4-H career. So once you get to this field here or to this web page that says additional available scholarships, you have to click each one that applies to you. For most of you, this is only going to be one region unless you've moved sometime in between, which I've, I don't think I've seen it before. I've clicked a whole lot of them because I wanted to show you at the end of it, once we get to the written requirements, what happens when you click them here and where they get you to. So I've clicked the Calgary region, um, East Central and the Northwest region, and it will prompt you further down the road to, for additional activities or, or you know, things that you have to complete. So as we go down the list, we'll see we have a whole lot of scholarships that are captured that you are eligible for. For example, Ginny's region has a long list of scholarships that are being awarded in addition to our provincial scholarships. And I think what I did not um, address earlier is in terms of process, when you apply for our 4-H Alberta scholarships, you automatically qualify for a provincial scholarship. 
which would be those scholarships here. This is the first list. Once you've been selected throughout the scholarship process, which happens on one day, um, scholarship recipients are being removed from the list of uh, eligibility. And we are going through the list of scholarship applicants until we filled all scholarships that you see throughout this entire page. However, even if for some reason you do not get a scholarship, which can happen, you're still eligible to apply and receive an additional scholarship. They have nothing to do with our provincial scholarships because they focus on region, district, and club. And most of them are awarded um, by their own committees. So Ginny has her own scholarship uh, committee in her region. So does the Calgary region, the Peace region. So there are individual committees that will select um, those scholarships listed in there as well. So um, there are multiple opportunities and sometimes you will get more than one scholarship, which is amazing. And even if you didn't get one on the provincial level, you can still get one on the regional or district level. So once you've made the selection, depending on what applies to you, you continue on and we get to the membership info. So I'm always, always going to uh, rely a little bit on Ginny because she has a much better way with words around memberships and information. But what it comes down to, this is about your 4-H career. This is what you have accomplished in your 4-H career, what you've done, uh, where you have, what, what clubs you have attended. So we have right now two mentioned, and I think that may have been somebody else in there before me. But we have uh, the club name, so you enter in your club, your most recent year involved, which is, as of right now, 2020, and how many years total. And it's, Ginny, please correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm uh, relaying the information wrong, but you can, have, you can have been part of two clubs around the same time, although it may not be the same years involved. So as it is here, you can have been part of a beef club. It may have started in 2018 for two years and you would have had the overlap. So you can add, I think, up to 10 clubs, I believe. Yeah. That, that's the limit. Yeah. How it was set up is, uh, and you would write out your full club name. Mm -hmm. um, these examples are, are pretty lame. Uh, we would name the, <laughs> or you would write out your entire 4-H club name and the most recent year that you were in it. So if, for example, you were in the fun 4-H club and you started eight years ago, uh, that would be like 2012, if I've got enough fingers, I'm probably wrong and then your most recent would be 2020 if you're still in that club. Then you may even be part of the Lake Del 4-H Youth Club and the most recent year maybe you were in it in 2013. Um, that was the last year that you were in it. So you had been in it for two years, that means you had started in it in 2011. So you have an overlap there, you were in both of those clubs mm -hmm. back in that 12-13 uh, year. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also going to jump in and just kind of clarify a couple of things as we go. Um, the the multi-club, that's fine. This is just your club mm -hmm. membership. Doesn't matter what kind of club it is. You would put in there the name of the club and how many years you were in it. Uh, we get into projects a little bit later on. And then just going back to a couple other quick things, um, I'm going to try and answer. As we go, again, some of these questions we're not going to get answered until after, but we will answer. Someone had asked if you would still apply if you were planning on taking a year off. No, you would not apply for the scholarship if you were not planning on going in either this fall semester in September or in January. Because some programs don't even start till January, you would just need to indicate that when you are applying. So it would be sometime you are applying right now, doing this application, which is due in May of 2020, if you are planning on going into post-secondary in September of 2020 or January of 2021. Mm -hmm. So that, I hope, kind of catches us up on that. Um, and then we'll answer that, the the dual credit courses, I'm not sure. We'll just kind of maybe have to work on that one a little later to talk about that, um, just to kind of keep on track here. Mm -hmm. 
And <clears throat> excuse me, do you include this year as a year completed? Well, we still use it because it's we, we can still use this year as 2020 as your most recent year involved, which is what we're saying here. Where and we'll continue on with this trend for the next foreseeable pages. So the next one we have is we're going over to the next page and it will bring us to our club projects. So Ginny, I will let you talk to the projects because I think you can explain them just like the diary points a lot better than I do, if that's okay. Okay, uh, so this page is where you're going to enter the club projects that you have registered in. Um, remember that a club project means completing a record book for that specific project. And now it's not, it isn't listing separately things like if you were in the market beef project and the heifer project and the two year old cow calf project, everything is bulked in under beef. Same thing uh, under sheep or horse, or if you saw that drop down, those are the things that they're kind of grouped into and so you would just put the most recent year that you were in any of those particular projects so it's not broken down into um like the specific like horse uh there's register um sorry horsemanship level four to seven you wouldn't be writing down also that you were in the reigning project and promoting a project so those all fall under that umbrella of horse and I see a question here. Would photography go under life skills and pheasant under small animals? That's correct. Photography is a life skills. And I'm pretty sure Ginny pheasant would be as well, correct? Uh, yeah, pheasant actually fits under... Um, small animals. Yeah. Yeah. Weirdly as it is, and I apologize for that, uh, pheasant is kind of one of those little arbitrary projects that's just a little bit outside the norm. So there's a question saying, does shooting sports go under other? So we have the life skills, we have other, which includes agriculture and environment. Shooting sports is actually under life skills. Okay. Beekeeping. Hmm. Oh gosh, you guys. We're Absolutely insane. Um, I would, I'm going to kind of direct you to look at our 4-H website and see where they are listed on the project resources page. Um, just for a little bit of simplicity and so we don't have to go through every one of them individually. Um, I'm hoping that, that, that I've got that, that I've even indicated the shows that one correctly, but I'm pretty sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, did you, it was just mentioned that we, uh, some couldn't hear you, but there is on the 4-H Alberta website, um, there is an entire section that speaks to all those different specific projects. So we can put it in our, um, we can put it in our FAQ document saying, where do I find it? And maybe it's already in there, would have to double check, but where can I find the listing of projects? So I have saved again my, pro uh, my, my progress as I've done it right now, and I move over to the next page, and it goes to offices held. So as you all know, you can have several positions within your club, and starting with president, and there is a drop down. So there are some others because some clubs have different terminology for several um, different um, positions. But what we have tried to capture are the ones that are the most, um, well, most represented along, you know, across all clubs. So we have the president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, and so on and so forth. Please note that you can only use one. So you can't have two treasurers. It's highlighted in red because if you say you've been a treasurer in 2019 and a treasurer in 2018, it would just give you two years. So you would delete this one here and say, okay, I've been a treasurer for two years. Same goes for historian. So you can only recognize your position once in a club for however many years you have done it. 
and it will actually show you each club that you have participated in. So it's, I entered the 4-H Lake Del Beef Club and um, we have the 4-H Multi Club and you add up to, I think, probably more than 10, but you can up, add up to as many as you want to, as many as there is in a drop down without repeating yourself. And it's pretty simple because you just start select position, club reporter, use for two, save. Okay, we know we cannot duplicate positions in the same club, but I'm going to continue on because at the end it will actually give you all the error messages and you can go back and, um, and fix it. Public speaking presentation demonstration experience. So we have public speaking that you have to enter in how many years you have completed it on a club, a district, regional, provincial and national level. Please keep in mind that area and zones don't really apply to all regions. I think that's their one-offs. So you can enter it, but it, it doesn't apply to everyone. So if you, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. But you complete it for your demonstration presentations as well as public speaking, and it will feed into your overall communications score in the um, scholarship. And before you go on from there, Bianca, sure. And I'm hoping that I'm a little closer to my mic. I hope people can hear me better. We do understand that this year has been an odd and unusual year, but for the majority, everybody, majority, uh, clubs have completed their communications as have districts. Where it gets a little bit iffy is some of the regions, and then at this time, provincial as well. And we are aware of that, but this is, uh, it, it's an unfortunate situation, and this is our continuous scholarship application. So the form has not changed. So you count the exact number of times that you have spoken. If it got canceled before you spoke, you do not write that one down. Thank you, Ginny. So your activity record, um, the first thing people normally get confused about is when you add an activity, you have two chances, or so you have two opportunities. You, you use it as participant, where you have been part of an activity, or above and beyond, that's kind of your leadership where you have organized it, you have, you've overseen a project or you've overseen an activity by itself. So above and beyond just means the next step up. You can enter uh, in the leadership, whatever the name of activity was, so you led a workshop or um, you, you have watched this webinar and now you're going to teach it to the rest of your club or you know, people in your region. And you would go as above and beyond because you're actually going to put on a workshop yourself to teach others the ins and outs of scholarships. It goes through like this for all of your, and they are all captured, I believe, Ginny, in the diaries. I think that's, is that correct? Yes. Good. Basically, this is where you are recording, similar to the diaries, your participation or if you went above and beyond. So it's either the participant one point or the uh, above and beyond two points. Mm -hmm. Fill in your leadership experiences first. You have up to 10 blanks you can fill in. Put down your absolute best samples demonstrating your leadership ability. Then go on to the other section for each volunteer, what you had done in the club, and then at the district or regional, and then provincial, national. Do them in that order because leadership is one of the key components to most scholarship criteria. So 
do your best one first. Thank you. Can I jump in, Bianca? We've had a multiple question about MC for public speaking, and if that counts. That's a communication activity. That would be being recorded on your previous page for your public speaking, because that ends up usually being your public speaking. Now, if you have done that more than one time, say if you use that as your, your public speaking opportunity within your club, you are actually looking to see if you are going to be able to show other leadership opportunities or use other examples outside of that one because it's actually already been recorded under your public speaking. And then we had highway cleanup be a provincial activity or a club activity. Um, I would count it as a club activity because you're doing it as you with your club. Would you agree, Jenny? It is a club activity. Uh, it's been a club activity for the last several years now in the diary. Okay. It's recorded as a club activity. And I think if you are unsure how your activity would count, I think the diary will help you a lot because it is, like Ginny said, recorded. So that should be a first step. Go to your diary, have a look, and, and then line it up with the application. And if you still have questions, obviously always contact us. We are here to help. So once you're through this page, um, it moves on and just, sorry, keep in mind, I'm not trying to do this too fast. Keep in mind, we are entering, um, anything for up including this year once we move on we get to the diary points and Ginny is kind of the expert and there is a little bit of a difference what we consider most complete diary year versus what we had you know what clubs or what club year have you been participating in correct the diary points you are going to record as per each of the diaries, how many points you received that year. So look on the back of your diaries, and these have been usually marked and signed off by your leader for each of the years that you have been active in 4-H. Mm -hmm. And this is a, the diaries are a great place for you to refer to rather than to go back through each one of your record books to find all the best examples of what you have done throughout your 4-H career. And those are the ones uh, that you are recording on the activity sections of that previous page that we just looked at. I would strongly suggest that the majority of members would have more than 10 opportunities because they've probably over the years done more than 10 things at the club or more than 10 maybe at the district but choose your best ones for each section there and refer to your diaries to get the answers so those two pages kind of go hand in hand mm -hmm. and that goes back to the question from earlier as well so if you have been a 4-H member in the past, but you, you're not anymore, can you still apply? Yes, you can, if you have all the information. So, you know, you see here 1995, I mean, I've had seen applications from the early 2000s. And as long as you can provide backup and information, absolutely go for it and apply. So the next one, it goes to the written requirements. So I'm going to try and zoom out <coughs> there are a few of them. And I hope this is still easy to read. I'm going to go back to 100% um, screen. But when you get to your written requirements, whatever you had selected earlier in terms of your uh, additional scholarship information here, where you had to check your uh, the mark of the checkboxes, that's what will pop up now, what you have to complete. And I would recommend, so here's, here's one that I would do. I've seen applications where people were trying to enter information, suddenly the internet broke down and you, you lose everything because you couldn't save fast enough. 
I would probably just um, I would probably just copy and paste the questions into a Word document, work on them in the Word document, and then copy and paste your final result back into the online application. Just because then even if you lose internet or you get kicked out of your application because you didn't save, at least your progress is not completely lost, especially around those um, written requirements. And it will allow you to just save it, leave it for a few days, come back, open your Word document, complete it, and then copy and paste the content into those. The first four are actually mandatory. So it doesn't matter if you are in one of those, um, if you're in one of those regions or not. So you have to complete your valuable skill, career highlight within 4-H, community group involvement, and uh, the volunteer and community service. So that's just something you would have to do. Once you get down to the additional questions, it will it relates to the earlier page that I had mentioned, and you will have to complete the, uh, the questionnaire. You will only have a maximum of 300 words or 200 words, so we made sure that you don't have to write, I don't know, in the past it was I think up to 1500 words that you could have written, although the actual you know, question said 500 to 750 words, so it was a little bit misleading for the applicants. Um, just go by the word count. If it says 300 words, only do 300 words. If it says between 700, 500 and 750 words, do the five, between five and 750 words. You only have so and so many available anyways. Important for some of those is um, the, um, the committees had requested that we include a clause that says must be original and plagiarism will result in disqualification. We had seen it in the past that you know, somebody would have downloaded something off the web. Coincidentally, two applicants had the same written requirement. And it was very disappointing because we couldn't award the scholarship. So just make sure that those are your own thoughts, your own words that you enter in those boxes. Once you are through them, um, just hit save. When you're com comfortable, this is what you want to do. Hit save and move on to the next page, sorry. And it brings you down to the references. So references are one for each reference, one school, one community. Those are people we may contact you. We may contact on your behalf. But please keep in mind, those do not replace the references that are requested or required by the individual additional scholarships. So some of those are, you know, like the Calgary region or, um, I don't know, the peace region that have specific requirements about the references, please do not forget those. A lot of them are actually hard copies that have to be sent in. Those are just references that we may contact, you know, in terms of want to know more about the applicant itself. And once you have entered those, you can upload your picture. What I would like to stress is sometimes when you upload or when we see uploaded picture, they go sideways or they are cut off somewhere or they're blurry. We need a picture that is really good in quality simply because we also include them on our poster. So if we have someone who's turned sideways and half of the face is cut off, um, it doesn't really help us, you know, send it over to the sponsor or the supporter or donor. But it would be great if you could just have a clear picture, high quality, uploaded, and if you do have problems, if you experience issues, just let us know. Once you um, could upload the picture, it goes back to the transcripts. Important for us is if you are a high school student, that's the only time we need your high school transcript. Once you're in post-secondary, we will only need the post-secondary transcript. So if you're completed your first, war, uh, first year at uh, UFA, then just uh, get us the transcript from UFA and we'll include that. You don't need to get it to us from your high school. Um, that would just be, be wasteful. We only need that from our current high school students. And please make sure that you do submit it, no, or the request um, to submit it no later than May 15th. So, if we don't get it by September 1st, because that's when you know, 
committees start looking into selecting their, um, their scholarship recipients, then it may result, I'm not saying it will, but it may result depending on the committee in disqualification because we do really need to see that you have requested it no later than May 15th, it's sent to us, it will come normally to the foundation between um, July and August, I would say, June, July, August, and then we have it on file. And then once you, you know that, and sorry, now let me go back onto the full Zoom. Once you know you have done it, please click I have submitted and it will show up um, and register as such in our application. So once you're done there, it will just pretty much give you a printer friendly version of your application. <clears throat> I often do it when I um, have to submit online applications for sponsors or even for grants. Like before I hit submit, I will actually download this version because it's easier to look at it from a big picture point of view versus trying to go through the individual pages again. And it will really show you what you have <clears throat> completed and how it will show up on the other end. So it will give you all the information, including your picture. <clears throat> and it will just be a gentle reminder, you know, have you really given your references? You know, have you provided three references for the Calgary region and have you completed your essay or, you know, for East Trent Central, <clears throat> have you, provided your references. So it will just will be a gentle reminder to, to make sure that you have it all. Once you're through, you hit review and submit. And if you have not, um, if you have not gone and checked out every single one of your personal info boxes, like up here, I confirm, then it will bring you back to the review and submit and you will have to go through each one individually. So that's just a last reminder to really have one second look and make sure that you have clicked all the boxes and you have provided all the information. And once you're through it, I'm not going to do it right now, but once you're through it and you've clicked all the boxes and you've made sure all the red messages disappear, you can hit submit and you will get a confirmation email. And that is the scholarship application. Yeah. Questions as of right now? I think there are some that we can go back and answer, Bianca. Okay. Um, basically, I think a lot of them are going back to the diary and then that activity record page. Those, the activity record page is probably the one that you're going to spend the most time on, except for maybe the written requirement. Yeah. So basically, again, on that page where you are putting in your examples, you are going to pick your 10 best examples under each one of those categories. You are going to try not to repeat yourself. So if you wrote it under leadership, that perhaps you led a scholarship workshop um, for your club members, perhaps you did it this past fall, uh, you would write that probably under leadership, and then you would have a different, you'd list 10 other things under club, so that you weren't writing it in two different locations. But it's up to you to determine what you want to list, that shows off you as a 4-H member and what you accomplished through your 4-H years. I hope that maybe makes a little bit more sense. And then going to that as well, the diary points, the diaries are marked by the leaders. Very seldom do 4-H specialists mark diaries unless someone is going to selection or applying for platinum. So it should be that your diaries have been signed off by yourself, your parent, and your club leader. And those you should be keeping for your for a long time, because you'll refer to them over and over and over again. It also 
um, you do not, you're not going to write down, um, I would suggest down activities from this club year for the 1920 year. And I believe that it says that at the top of the page because that year, year's diaries have not been signed off by anyone as yet. So only write down activities that have been kind of check marked by your leader as completed. Um, some of the other questions referring say in that same regard. Um, again, if you're an MC somewhere or whatever, if that's the example that you wish to use, you are able to do that. But remember, if you use that MC opportunity as your communication activity, do not count that or write that one down as your activity because it's already been included on the communication one. And, and also somebody asking, do you include this year's activities even though you don't use this diary points? Yes. As long as you said they have been marked off by the leader, correct, Ginny? No, basically oh. the activities, as it says at the top of the page, it doesn't say at the top of the page, uh, but basically you could write down activities on there that were in the beginning of this 1920 club year, except consider that the diary points on the next page are coming into, um, they're part of the equation as well. And those diary points are not included for the 1920 club year as the club year has not yet been included. So hope this helps. Can you reapply in your second and third year if you receive a scholarship for your first year? So I assume Samantha, you mean Samantha, if you've applied last year, you received a scholarship last year, can you reapply this year? Um, yes, you can. So if you have completed your first year of post-secondary last year, you received a scholarship, either one, provincial or additional, and you're going to continue on your, your scholarship, then uh, your, your post-secondary, then yes, absolutely come back and reapply and you may get another scholarship. It really depends on the scholarship itself. If they um, mandate it has to be a, uh, awarded to a first year um, student or if it's uh, second year and up. So that really depends. Does your application information save year over year? Sorry, Ginny, did you say something? I was just going to say, so everybody should remember to apply, apply, apply all the way through your post-secondary because there are different scholarships. This is a great application because you only have to fill it in once and then your information goes in and is considered for any of the scholarships that you actually meet the criteria for. So it kind of... Um, moves you out if you're not eligible for a particular scholarship but if you're not eligible for one that doesn't mean you're not eligible for another 25. yeah and so that answers kim's question i think um, because does the application information save year over year yes once you've applied once the basic information will still be there so you don't have to re-enter your name your birth date your uh, high school information, it will stay there and it will carry over. You will just have to um, rewrite information or update information based on your post-secondary. So now you would be in a different year and you will have to write a new essay. Yes, Donna. So you have to write a new essay. So it's original content. Although, you know, you may have the same topic, but you should write a new essay. And then Christine Patton, Chris says, um, you were not clear if you can use activities from 2019, 2020 on this application. It does not say you can't. And you are correct. It does not say that you can't. So yes, you can. But you cannot list your diary points for 1920 because it has not been signed off by a leader. 
So I don't know if everybody heard that, but um, yes, you can use your activities, but not your diary points. And I think the big difference, Ginny, is that the activities have to be signed off by your club leader. Is that correct? The diaries do, yes. Oh, the diaries do, sorry, not the activities. Yes, so we will we'll make that uh, a little more clear next year in the application. Mm -hmm. So as a club leader, if I should encourage the grade 10 and 11 students to get a jump on their scholarship application, so they think harder about their, not about their post-secondary. Well, the thing is there's one scholarship that obviously within the 4 Alberta scholarships uh, allows to apply even if you're not going into post-secondary and that's Flagstaff. So I don't know if it would make much sense for them to apply if they cannot get anything else but the Flagstaff. It, yeah, I don't know, what's your thought, Jenny? Um, yeah, actually, I would say that, hey, just consider the Flagstaff is a, an entirely separate, it's an exception. So the majority of people should be aware that they need to be moving out of grade 12 into post-secondary or into apprenticeship or whatever. Mm -hmm. but they need to be in grade 12 to complete this application. They can learn all the way they, they want, but they cannot fill out this application form unless they are in grade 12 or beyond, okay. except for the flight. And yes, Michelle, so you can apply after you've already started your post-secondary because it goes back to what Ginny said, apply, 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 because there's a good chance you're eligible. So if your information is there, has been completed and submitted, then we can include it in our scholarship selection. And uh, yes, he or she, if a student starts the application, can save it and return later. So just hit the save button and then you have right now, I have 35 minutes before I would, it would kick me out, but make sure in between you save and you log out and you come back and the information is there. So now we're getting here in, yes, so, so there's now you know, conversations going on on the chat. So yes, some scholarships are for second and third year. It really depends on the scholarship. And that's where, um, when we go back to the introduction page and we look at the additional and the provincial scholarship applications, it shows here, for example, CCI Wireless, they are saying year of study is first, second, third, or fourth. And they are very specific about the telecommunications or communications um, post-secondary uh, study. And no, we're not discouraging uh, from start filling out the application. It just, it may not, they may not be eligible for the other 4-H Alberta scholarships. Uh, Michelle is saying, are diary points needed for all 4-H scholarships and additional scholarships? Yes, no. they are. No? Well, they are not, but you need to get those activities from somewhere. So if you have not completed diaries, you would be getting all of those activities from previously filled out record books. And then for the diary points, you would just put in zero. That is allowed. Okay. okay. Bianca, do you want to just state the deadline again? Someone was asking that. Uh, absolutely. So the deadline is May the 15th at 3 p.m. So May the 15th this year falls on to a Friday. So on on before 3 p.m. Uh, to hit submit on the application. Well, thank you so much, Donna. Appreciate that. Hope it helps. We are going to post it as soon as we can. <laughs> And we'll also uh, copy and paste um, the questions that came up throughout this um, webinar chat and 
cross-reference with our frequently asked question document that we have. And make sure we update and upload. All right. So there's a few other questions. Less diary points give you a lower chance of getting a scholarship? Not necessarily. There are a tremendous number of different scholarships on uh, through this one application form. So where it may affect you on one scholarship and may not on another. So even if there isn't a completed a bunch of completed diaries, as long as uh, you can fill in all of the activities or you know fill in all the rest of the pages within this um, scholarship application, absolutely apply. You never know. Uh, any other questions right now? Like I said, you know, sometimes you'll go through it again on your own or you'll, uh, you'll think back and you'll realize, oh, yeah, I didn't actually ask this or that. Feel free, contact 4H to go to scholarship at 4HAB.com and um, either myself or Karina, um, and if I don't know, I may just ask Ginny, <laughs> uh, will answer. And our pleasure. So I really, or we really hope this helps and provides some clarification. And um, anytime you have questions, do feel free to contact us. Awesome. Well, with that, um, oh, do we count this year as completed? No, 2019, 2020 is not completed yet. It completes on September 30th. Well, thank you, Ilse, as well. Um, with that, we'll uh, disconnect and uh, close the webinar. Thank you so much for joining. It was really much appreciated. Hope it helps. And we'll be in touch. Contact us anytime you do have questions. And stop recording, Bianca. Okay. <laughs> so. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.